In this video, it is the small Ford that no one can pronounce. It's the car, and that's official. Yes, this is the car that Ford launched in 1996 using the running gear of the Fiesta to make into a new city car with uh, the new edge styling that was about to become completely in vogue for Ford. So it's a really odd looking car, that the, especially when you come around the back, it's a, a riot of angles and lines in places you don't fully expect them to be. I think especially the rear view, uh, with time it's easy to lose sight of how weird these were when they came out, but it's just big fat bumper and this strange curve around here. It's a really peculiar looking car, but uh, very distinctive. And I think these distinctive looks um, helped the car, or car, sorry, to achieve a wider audience and to have a very long production life, 12 years in production. Uh, this slightly later one has body colored bumpers. I think these actually look at their best when they've still got the black bumpers of the original early models, very distinctive. So this new edge styling was very much led by the American team, but it was um, Claude Lobo and Chris Svensson who really honed this design. Chris Svensson being a British designer. And uh, I, th I think he'd come up with some similar things for when he graduated from university. And it's just lovely little touches that we would see on, replicated across Ford's global design language. The way the line of the indicators goes right through the grill. Um, you can see design touches like that on my Australian Ford Fairmont AU, Ford Cougar, third generation Mondeo, lots of these lovely little tweaks and even the bonnet, which actually curves down before then going over the engine. It's a lovely design touches that have really helped the car, the car, sorry, to um, stand out over the years. Very, very distinctive. And I think it's aged remarkably well. well let's have a look at the engine. So under the shapely bonnet of this car launched, or CA, launched in 1996, we find an elderly overhead valve engine. It was cleverly marketed as the Endura E, but actually this engine's origins date back all the way to the 105E Anglia. This is the Kent engine uh, to all intents and purposes, just mildly repackaged with fuel injection and a few clever bits uh, for a new generation. The uh, Kent engine became the Valencia when it was put into the Fiestas, but then they put the Kents in in 1.3 litre form, and this effectively is the same engine. So it, it's very elderly, despite this very modern plastic and all this, it is an old engine with overhead valves. They are said to be a bit clattery, but if I fire this one up, um, I think we'll hear it isn't too bad at all. Oh, actually, maybe, maybe, maybe when you've got the bonnet open, you can hear the valve gear. That's the sound you don't tend to get. Yeah, that, that makes me think of Fiestas. It's interesting how that doesn't come through as you're driving it. In suspension terms, we've got McPherson strut front suspension, another Ford innovation. Uh, the rear axle, I believe, is the same twist beam as the, C the Fiesta, the Mark III Fiesta of 1989. At an entirely different location, should you be doing your shopping, remote boot release, how fancy is that? It's uh, not a bad old boot actually, uh, there's a reasonable amount of space in there, have we got a spare under the floor? No, just the floor. Is there a spare underneath? I now need to look. Yeah, full size spare slung under the back of the car, but I don't think that's too bad and you can easily fold the rear seats for a bit more space should you feel the need to cram something in that really shouldn't be in a car this small. Right then, let's go somewhere else and go for a drive. So coming inside, and I have to say I really like this interior, it's just a riot of, um, there's a triangular shape but it's so much a part of the new edge design, but so many curves as well. The, the curve around the speedo binnacle is particularly delicious I think. Look at that, it's lovely. Very simple, we just got a speedometer and a fuel gauge and a few warning lights. There's not an awful lot going on. Loads of bare metal, which I really, really like. I actually think that brightens up the interior. Uh, it's a sign of cheapness in a more modern car design, but uh, I think it's actually been used very well to good advantage here. And of course, very 90s 
you've got to have some colorful interior trim going on. And in terms of these vents, I absolutely love these. That's the closed position. And then you can turn them this way and it feels really nice and solid as well. Lovely action on those. Uh, nice, simple heat controls, but we have got air conditioning. There's been a collection, so it's got mild poshness. No cigarette lighter, but we have got a 12 volt power outlet down there, a little blanking plug for it. And a little glove box in here as well. Although that, I'm not sure that's quite meant to come off like that, but it does. And it reveals a couple of cup holders in there as well. Very, very nice clock, very stylized. Again, that new edge styling. So in a, in a way, this sort of feels familiar. I, I get these vibes in my Australian Ford Fairmont, which was also built to those new edge design rules. Uh, I think this would be an optional airbag um, here. It doesn't seem to serve any other purpose. So it's just a bit of a blanking plate. But yeah, it's really nice. The driving position is superb. The seats have nice chunky bolsters to really keep you pinned in, which is an important part of um, that Richard Parry Jones mindset of making the cars fun to drive. A really nice snickety gear lever. That works really, really well. We've got power steering on this one as it's a collection. So uh, the base models did without power steering, but this one has got it. Uh, we shall fire up the uh, engine. Oh, turn the fans off a moment. For the all important windscreen wiper test. So pop them on. We have got a mist function. There is, sadly, we have got a very small triangle of doom here. And uh, if I uh, turn the wipers off, we may get the dribble of disappointment. It's starting to form up there. Uh, it's just a minor oversight, really. Far worse on cars like Mark 1 Focus and Mondeo. Uh, rear wiper. This one seems a little slow, but, you know, it kind of works away. There's only one setting, on or off. And uh, offers a good performance, I think. And I quite like the character of having a, a wiper that isn't going through the rear window. Everything these days tends to have that going on. I should probably try and jump in the back. It could be amusing, so let's give it a go. So leave the engine running for mild demisting power. Ooh. And uh, it is a bit of a squeeze. I'm pushed for headroom. My head is actually uh, in the roof. My knees are in the back of the front seat. But I've got a little elbow cubby just here. Um, the rear windows do pop open. In fact, I might even do that for a bit of ventilation. And there's a place to put your seat belts in here so that when you fold the rear seat, the seat belts don't get caught up in it. How good an idea is that? Small things, people, are sometimes so important. Right, I'm getting back out again. Little pockets in the back of the uh, front seats. Quite a nice touch. Urgh. Fold myself out and back in. Oh. And uh, we can go for a drive in the uh, little car. Uh, I'm going to put the fans back on, I'm afraid. We do need that, we do need headlights, we do need wipers. And uh, we shall get underway. So the pronunciation is much discussed, isn't it's it? It's much discussed, the pronunciation of ka. Uh, people say ka or car, but uh, Ford, apparently a bit confused themselves, eventually said, no, it is ka, as in cat, without the T. So a slightly odd choice, but uh, there we go. But uh, it's a nice torquey engine. Uh, it's very old school, as, as we said. So uh, overhead valves for this era, not really all that common. But it doesn't feel like an ancient engine to drive it. It feels quite zingy, actually. Uh, there's quite a lot of road noise, I will say, but Ford didn't go crazy with sound deadening on these cars because if you wanted comfort, you bought a bigger car. This was designed for bombing around cities, really, which is where it's 1.3 litre is a bit of an anachronism. It's quite a big engine for a city car. Most would be one litre around this time. I believe in Brazil you could get your car with a one litre engine. There's also the only market where they ever gave the car a facelift. I will say, over this really broken terrain, the ride is actually a bit rough and ready and not very refined at all. But uh, going down the road, the wipers do actually work well. And uh, yeah, it just feels very pleasant, surprisingly composed for a city car. This is an era when city cars were starting to 
not specialised quite so much, but yeah, that ride is a little rough and ready. I'm a little disappointed with that, given the um, the brilliance behind the car. The Perry Joan cars all, all tended to be really good in terms of handling and a nice, exciting, spirited drive. Now, one possible downside of the car is they were designed with that sporty driving in mind. And one of the um, downsides is fun on a track but in real life has caught out many a young inexperienced driver and I'm, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with that given this is obviously a car that's going to be driven by people who are young and inexperienced. They do have a tendency to go lift off oversteer quite dramatically and uh, I, I certainly know a few people that have been caught out by that. So that's one of the things that uh, you know an engineer a, a racing driver will think that is absolutely brilliant but you can tease the back end out with a bit of um, throttle use or rather throttle lift but uh, many inexperienced drivers aren't expecting the car to do that so that is to me a bit of a downsize given the target market i don't think we'll be teasing the back end out today it could be a bit dangerous given how wet it is There's, rather damp the gear change is just an absolute delight you can flick it into the various gear positions you haven't got to force it anywhere it's lovely yeah this example's only done 50,000 miles which is um, you know no miles at all really i wish the air conditioning was working though we are steaming up a treat in here the good news is this car is actually for sale for what I think is a very reasonable 895 as the asking price. So uh, if you're interested, you can um, drop me an email and I can pass your details on to the seller. But uh, yeah, it seems a great little car, 50,000 miles. It has full service history. I think, did he say it's been in the family from new? Uh, if not, certainly a long time. So it would be a bit of a sad sale, but uh, yeah, the chaps like me has too many cars. So I know the feeling. And yeah, it, it'd be a great little buy, I think, if you if you want something that's good. Guaranteed future classic, I think, these uh, four cars. Well, it's horrendous conditions out here on the motorway. But the little car does not feel out of place at all. Actually makes pretty decent progress. It's not the fastest, 60 brake horsepower isn't ever so much, but it, because it's got a good amount of torque, I think it's 105 newton meters, you don't find yourself having to downshift to keep your momentum up. So we're, we're doing 70 miles an hour now and it's absolutely fine, even uphill. So a pure city car, it isn't really. It's at home out on the motorway as well. So if you actually do manage to encounter some um, more interesting roads, uh, the car definitely um, feels nicely alive. Uh, the steering, even though it's power assisted it weighs up really really nicely so uh, you have great confidence in it front end feels very planted yeah the engine just pulls really nicely all the way through the rev range it's a very well sorted car but then the underpinnings are so good and so well proven already in various fiestas effectively these underpinnings date from 1989 uh, revised slightly for the mark IV fiesta and the car but uh it, not, none of this car is um, as new as the um, number plate would suggest. It's all ancient, but reworked to really work very nicely indeed, I think. You know, just turn it in and yeah, it just goes where you want. You can easily keep up with a very laden transit van. It's amazing. It's just a really likeable package and I can see exactly why these cars were so popular and for a cheap car I don't think it feels too cheap in here either I mean examine the plastics they're perhaps not the best but if you avoid doing that absolutely not a problem I think the overall feel of the car is very very good there's no shakes or rattles as we're going down the road it feels like a remarkably solid bit of kit obviously there are downsides they do rot and the later the car the worst they seem to be, the, the last of ones, when they got the Duratec overhead cam engine, they seem to dissolve in the blink of an eye. So while this one has had some welding, uh, it 
isn't um, completely rotten by any stretch of the imagination. For a 22 year old car, that really is not bad going at all. Yeah, it's kind of enough power to enjoy responsibly on the road, I would say. And I'm going to do my outro now as well, because uh, it's pouring, pouring with rain. I'm not getting out to record it outside. Sorry, folks. But uh, yeah, I, I think these are great little cars. It's the first time I've driven one in a number of years, but they are fizzy and fun. And uh, even though the underpinnings are so ancient, it, it, it's just a concept that works so well. Ford are very good at um, getting the most out of something, and they definitely did here. So repackaging of the Fiesta, I don't think anyone saw coming, and um, which has proven to be a remarkable hit. So thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store if you wish to buy lovely merchandise. Hoodies now available again. And uh, we shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Pssh.